Hi, this is Optimus Primal, and this is Silverbolt's Transformer Review. Afternoon, everybody. This isn't your video. This is my video. Afternoon, everybody. Silverbolt and Sideswipe here. Back to do a Transformers review, and... Yes, you go to sleep on my mouse pad. Just, just you go to sleep. I'll do this myself, shall I? Still should have named you Tomahawk. Back to do a Transformers review. And for those of you who paid attention to my Facebook page, because I'm not on Twitter, Matt, because I, I don't want to be. We are going to be doing... T... Uh, no, 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 no. Uranus. Not made by TSC. Yes, it is made by TSC. I can't remember. Anyway, Blackbird. Silverbolt. So, Silverbolt doing Silverbolt. Now then, um, as with the Firefly video, for the first part, for the next part of Uranus, would really help if you could put in a one liner here, you know. Comedy only really works when there's someone to bounce it off, you know? Oh well. Anyway, um, going to be doing this toy. Isn't it pretty? Kind of. I'll get to that, though. Um, damn it, talking to the dog. We're going to lose track. Now then, yes. Going to be sticking with Silverbolt's character bio. Um, now, Silverbolt in his uh, Generation 1 continuity, as everyone knows, is the plane that's got a phobia of heights. Now, this is only equal by Broadside's flaw in that he also has a fear of heights. He's also afraid of water. Bit of a problem. So there we go. But Silverbolt has a fear of heights. And Silverbolt's ongoing character development is that he can is is his story to get past this fear of heights. Because of his fear of heights, Optimus Prime goes and makes him the leader of the Aerial Box in the Generation 1 cartoons, and that storyline has stuck. Silverbolt is pretty much unequivocally the leader of the Aerial Bots. Now then, for this video. Um, as with the Firefly video, I'm going to be sticking to his IDW counterparts. Now, of course, I can also talk about his Dreamwave. However, that story more directly involves Superion. So, I will get to Superion's video in, funnily enough, the Superion video. So, talking about Silvolt in his IDW continuation. Now then, before the war, Silvolt was a member of the of Captain Orion Pax's team, serving in as their eye in the sky as a plane and as a general law enforcement officer. Okay, now then, um, when Soundwave began to show his allegiance to the Decepticon, Silvervolt pretty much abandoned his post and went after him, only to be taken out by Ratbat. Ratbat, of course, is another character in the IDW continuity. He becomes a lot more prolific in his... Um, than in his Generation 1 cartoon format. And for a bit more on that one, I believe you'd need to refer back to my Ratbat video where I did the repaint of Cybertron Soundways. Now then, he did, Silverbolt did, did participate in the search for the Insurgent Hot Rod, but he couldn't actually assist his teammates when um, they were separated from him. Now, as the aerial bots responded to Optimus Prime's call for people to come fight in the war, Silverbolt was one of the ones that responded. And he did fight against the Seekers. Now, the Aerial Bots and the Seekers in the IDW tend to have a bit of a rivalry. Kind of like swoop and dive bomb. Something that's alluded to once or twice, but never really goes anywhere. Now, in the modern era of the IDW continuities, this is after all the events of the original war, Optimus Prime is leading the Autobots into the field. Silverbolt becomes the operations commander and is one of the most prolific in all of the combined leaders in that he actually has a role seemingly outside of his respective combiner team. You never really see Hotspot away from the Protector Bots or Scattershot away from the Technobots or even any of the other really. I mean, I think Motormaster has some little bits here and there where he's on his own. Because um, I believe, though I could be wrong on this, Motormaster actually separates himself from the other... Um, Stunticons. What, is it Murder Master? I can't remember. I've only researched Silverbolt because obviously, as I said before, living in the west of Ireland, I, I don't exactly have access to a lot of comics bar what I can find on the odd site and what I've got in my box, which includes Spotlight. 
in the form of Blaster, where Silver Bolt is a main part. Now, Silver Bolt um, is commanding the, Auto the Autobots aerial complex, where Blaster operates out of. Now, Blaster is the voice, and he's kind of this... Um, he's kind of like this illegal radio... DJ who is talking about the efforts of the Autobots throughout the course of the war and he's targeted for termination by the Decepticons so Silverbolt and Blaster set up a trap in order to catch the assassin which turns out to be a brainwashed beachcomber so anyway um, now though he doesn't show up in the Earth comics he is mentioned that he is at times on Earth with the other Autobots but he doesn't really come into it. When most of the Autobots eventually leave Earth in order to fight Galvatron and the army of Decepticons that he has assembled, um, Silverbolt is separated again from his team. Um, when the Galvatron goes to fire, he's the main weapon of the Kimi Kimia, 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 the K something 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 facility. Kimia. Is it Kimia? K-I-M-I-A. Kimia. 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 Whatever. Um, Silvolt is avoids the being destroyed during that one. And after the Chaos War, Silvolt's fellow aerial bot, Barrel Roll. That's not my phone going, going off. Okay. Barrel Roll is killed when he gets into a confrontation with Dirge. Dirge apparently gets away from this after a mysterious explosion occurs. Killing Barrel Roll, who is a member of Silverbolt's team, who incidentally in the IDW comics looks quite a lot like a futuristic green blackbird. But there we go. Um, Silverbolt actually then goes after Dirge and nearly kills him, but he's stopped um, under the orders of Bumblebee's government, mainly because they're trying to stop further hostilities. And if there's a direct conflict where it's a proven fact that an Autobot has been deliberately aggressive against Decepticon, it will happen again. Now, um, after this event's happened, Silverbolt gets rather annoyed with Autobot High Command, and he basically, he feels an awful lot alongside um, other, other Autobots. I won't go into who, because it's a long list, and frankly, I don't actually know that much about it. Um, Silverbolt decides that he and the other aerial bots are going to go off into the Untamed Wilderness. However... They the other aerial bots, not including Silverbolt, start losing their minds. And Silverbolt's not affected by it, and he believes it because he never truly felt part of his team. Slingshot, of course, has always been antagonistic towards Silverbolt. So he's always felt a little bit of an outsider, despite the fact that he's the leader. One of the genuine burdens of command of being raised from the ranks. You know, you're no longer one of the boys. And Silverbolt has never quite really adapted to this, would be one way of interpreting his roles within the comics. Now, Silverbolt separates from the other aerial bots again. This is a running theme with Silverbolt in that he seems to come in and come out of the aerial bots pretty much as he goes. Unlike, as I said, the other Aurobots, uh, well, even the Decepticon combiner teams, who are pretty much always on their own. I'm uh, sorry, are always with their other groups. Um, so when Silverbolt does actually meet back up with the other aerial bots, he does find them, um, he does seem to find that he's starting to be affected, whatever it is that's actually affecting the other Autobots. And that is pretty much where that story of the line ends until Ironhide later comes out into it. And he's been sent out to find the other aerial bots. And he actually does come across Silverbolt. Um, however, by the time he has located all of the aerial bots, they have all merged into Superior. That's something where I'm going to stop Silverbolt's story there pretty much as is. Uh, mainly so that when it comes to me doing the Superior part of this review, of this video, um, we are going to see, um, uh, it'll give me more to talk about for Superior rather than just these five parts go like this and, oh, isn't he pretty and cool? I think Anton Bolt's running off on me. That was unbelievably camp. I take it I'm doing this completely on my own now, dog, yeah? I'm trying to sleep on the set, on the chair beside me. You have been to me. Anyway. On to the toy. Now then, the first thing we are going to have to mention in regards to this toy is, of course, he's a Blackbird. Yes, he is a SR-71 Blackbird. He is not Concord. Now, wh why is that? Well, I did actually dig that out in preference to doing this review. Ooh, sorry, I've got my 
my Sky's transferring over today, so I'm getting rid of that other company that I'm with, which is terrible, and moving on to Sky. And I've just noticed that the, the little internet symbol on my Sky hub box has gone white, which means I now have proper internet. At the moment, I'm actually using my phone, which isn't a good thing to be using as a hotspot, but there we go. Um, so I can turn off that, and then I can go back to playing Neverwinter after I've done this video. Um, anyway, so yes, now the reason that um, Silverbolt in this form is a blackbird, and he's white, the reason he has done this is because apparently it was due to scale. One of the biggest problems that we always have with a lot of the combiner teams was that they were horrendously out of scale with each other. Um, when it comes, um, is that, sorry, that they were horrendously out of scale with each other and the aerial bots were one of the biggest offenders for this. You've got the likes of Concord, which is a huge, massive, ridiculously long, I think it's from like a 70 foot plane. It's 70 feet long, you know, that, the plane is, is, you know, you know, it's, what, must be, what's the length of my house? Is it 70 foot or is it 70, no, it wouldn't be 70 metres. It wouldn't be 70 bloody metres. Anyway, either way, it's feffin' big, um, compared to the likes of Harriers and F-15s, which make up the other, um, planes that are within the aerial box, it's woefully, woefully overrepresented. So they've changed it to the Blackbird, which is only about half the size of a, of a Concorde, despite the fact that he's white. I suppose it also brings people's minds into um, Jetfire from Revenge of the Fallen, but the less said about that awful piece of tripe, the better. Okay, so then, onto the plane. Right, that's this plane that comes with it, but we'll go into the other thing that comes with it first. Namely, F-47 Phantom Ray. This guy, who is basically a stealth bomber, um, who's another little robot that comes with the Superion toy and forms the chest plate to, sorry, comes with the Silver Bolt toy and forms the chest plate to Superion. Now then, um, when I first saw the promo pics of this guy, I didn't like him that much. But now that I've got him in my hands, and I've had, you know, the requisite fiddle around with him and play around with him for a little, not much bigger than a Legends class. He's actually a really, really nice little toy. He's really quite funky. Um, I named him, um... What the hell did I call him? Because I haven't called him Phantom. Did I call him Phantom? I can't remember what I called him. I think from now on I'm going to call him Barrel Roll in homage to the lime green Autobot that got killed by Dirge. So I'll call him Barrel Roll from now on. I'm fairly sure I actually used to call him Phantom. Why can't I? I remember what I called the other part, but I can't call him. Anyway, onto this toy. Um, obviously, again, completely the wrong colours for an actual stealth bomber. No, it's Phantom. I, I don't know. It's one of the others. I, I've given up coffee. That's my excuse. I've given up coffee. So, yes, it's Phantom. I did call him Phantom. Anyway, carry on, Simon. Um, obviously a stealth bomber, but a really nifty, nifty little toy. Um, transforming him, very, very simple. Disconnect the arms. Um, pull down the chest piece so that it sits flush. Turn the head round. Fold out the legs. They're all on ball joints, so they just twiddle and fiddle into place. Unfold the feet like so, get the arms into positions you need them to be in to be accurate, and they bend at the elbow. And then you've got little guns here, which you can just pull back to reveal underneath, uh, to reveal underslung wrist weaponry. And for jet mode, or stealth bomber mode, oh, you need to pull out the little fins at the waist as well to give him something resembling a waist so he doesn't look like an anorexic supermodel. Anorexic supermodel? Would that be an accusation or a description? Because they're all anorexic, pretty much. Oh, but there we go. Um, he also does have guns that he can have at the front, just here, which are all which can be hidden away in robot mode. Um, for a Legends class, and he is, he's not much bigger than a Legend, um, or, ve or a very small scout, he's a nice little toy. You know, he's got head rotation from side to side, but he doesn't go up and down. Um, shoulders... Double elbow articulation, because it, 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 it bends here and it bends here, though of course it only has the hinge joint as an elbow. But that's not the only 
toy that does that so you can let it go um, my biggest gripe about it despite the fact that it's I suppose in some regards to throw back the old MicroMaster days he doesn't have any actual fists they're just stuck in the actual plastic itself and especially when you look at the artwork for him they're clearly supposed to pop out I don't know what happened to the front of my box oh well never mind so that's Phantom out of the way let's get on to the big boy Oh, there's an innuendo. In your end, That's what she said. Anyway, uh, transforming this guy. Now, I have actually been playing around with this a lot. Um, and I have actually discovered that the, 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 the descriptions that the, the box gives, that the instructions give you, are actually quite convoluted with a lot of twisting and turning and fiddling and faffing and messing around. And to me, they're not quite all that necessary so I'll show you the third part that comes in with this toy which you just disconnect the nose cone and pop out and this is uh, I nicknamed this guy Vector um, I suppose he would be an unmanned drone attack vehicle water skiing every little thing hyperspace blasting a little bit of everything okay um, it does allow me to talk about uh, one of the accessories not really an accessory is the chain gums chain gums of chain gums chain guns of doom to go back to the days of Beast Wars in the form of these rail guns that are attached well mini guns rail gun no they're not mini guns they're not rail guns rail guns are uh, parts of accelerator weapons um, but anyway, um, I've been reading the new Tau Codex from Games Workshop. But anyway, um, these mini guns that are really, really multi-directional posable. Posable. I mean, you can you can really take this thing, and you know, it could rain destruction down upon you from a great fiery height with very, very little worry about you know where it can't hit. And I actually think that once you get past just how silly they tend to look on a blackbird they're actually really nice and I do think that you know Vector is a very nice little kind of like attack drone little bit little a little bit extra that goes on that also forms the, the firearm for both Silverbolt and Superior now then um, the robot will transform in this guy into a now as I said the instructions do come with an awful lot of fiddling and faffing and twisting and moving around I have found that you don't really need to worry an awful lot about it. Um, fold down the, the fins on the top of the plane. Just pull out the legs. This is where I really need a video camera that I can actually watch what I'm doing. Um, pull out the legs and just fold them round so that they're forward facing. Uh, do the same both sides. They just unclip quite nicely. Um, Pull up the leg guards and push them into place. They're a bit fiddly. There we go. Push them into place and turn those up like so. Again on the other side. I'm starting to feel like I'm an art attack here. I feel like Michael B um, Buchanan. I can't remember his first name. Uh, twist down the feet. Chest piece, uh, tend to just turn the missiles, secondary landing gear out, whatever, 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 whatever. Uh, on the back, you've got a piece at the top and the bottom which just fold down. So he looks less like he's having a skirt. Just pull out the, the jet engines. And then they just push back in. And you just pull them out, turn the head, push in the two little flaps on either side of the head, twist the arms round, and the hands are just inside here. Um, naturally enough, I'm not going to be able to get them out. Sorry, they're high elves. Didn't mean to knock you over because I'm painting them again. And just very carefully get the hands out. 
good old games workshop clippers to the rescue again but they're actually not that hard to get out at all I'll just make sure everything is folded and in the right way uh, as I said the instruction manual was a lot more complicated than it actually needed to be and now here we have silver bolt in robot mode now one of the things I'm going to address whilst I've got him like this is everyone says he's so big he's absolutely massive and his torso chest area seems unproportionate now I can say I would agree with that I do think that's true but you can at least give the give an illusionary effect that he's smaller by pushing in these parts here and the chest guards which are the same on six shot in all fairness they're completely pointless because that happens just push them forwards so they're poking out a little bit or just have them pointed downwards to hide them even more or even turn them in and around which really does help narrow him down now the other problem that people have with this toy is this oh sorry is this is these massive jetpack boosters well i know you know okay yes it does tend to make them kibble but you can just pull them off you know you can gripe and moan about it but they do just pull off so you can make him look much 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 slimmer in that regard i think he looks a little bit too i think he looks a bit out of proportion actually but so the way i tend to favor it which is um the way i tend to do it is leave the jetpacks on let me just get them in properly and just fold them back a bit a little bit you know you might have to do a little bit of fiddling to get them to stay in one place but not a great deal and they fold back in nice in place and it gives silver a, a better sense of height overall now then okay um now I do like this toy. Uh, I have a couple of complaints about it. Um, the back legging, not a big fan of, but I do understand why it's done like that. The fact that it's completely open, I do understand why it's done like that. Of course, he is the he is the focal point for changing him into superior. So these legs have to be folded out of the way. Again, that is a video that I will come to when I do the actual superior video. Um, I really hope that I haven't just chopped off the front half of my head while I've been displaying this talking to the camera because that's what I managed to do on my Thundercracker review which I have got my Masterpiece Thundercracker review which I have got recorded um, I just haven't uploaded it but anyway um, I don't like that um, he has no he has full wrist articulation however I have noticed they're very very easy to just pop out of place and that's not me and my usual heavy handedness snapping Masterpiece Megatron in half they just tend to pop out of place really, really easily. Uh, so you've got to be careful with that because obviously you don't want to break them. They do just push back in, but still, I'd rather not. I don't want to run the risk of damaging you know, quite an expensive toy. Um, other than that, I think he's very, very nice. Unlike Fireflight, his light piping actually serves a purpose in that he doesn't have a great big cone at the back of his head to completely block it. Head. Um, good posability has some has some up and left and right not so much by way of down but there we go very very nice face sculpt very reminiscent of um, classic silver bolt rather than comic silver bolt um, um, shoulder articulation wrist articulate uh, elbow articulation wrist articulation all very good and nice um, it does move at both the uh, hips and the thigh and the knee but doesn't have an ankle movement the foot will move up and down up and down up and down but that's about it so it does hamper those heroic action poses overall a very nice toy in the chest piece which is another form of complaint that some people have in that it's too bulky is superion's head um, and you just you folded now I haven't quite figured out completely how you sort it out completely but I haven't really looked at them turning into silver bolt instructions yet uh, turning into superior instructions mainly because you know I'm waiting for that to come along but silver bolt's head is in the chest compact cavity which of course is why it's so bulky why they didn't just do the classic transformers look of giving him a separate head don't know 
Um, now, onto the part of this toy that I actively dislike. I don't like this part. And that is Silverbolt's gun. Uh, this is Silverbolt's gun. Sorry, I'm just transforming it here. However you want to have the chain guns of doom, I don't know. And that. That is Silverbolt's gun in one configuration. You can have it in different configurations if you really want. Sorry, I just heard the dog going at something. I was worried he was going after the carpet. Oi! There we go. Puppies. So you can have it in multiple ways that you want it, and it fits into it, and it does fit into his hand, which is a five mil peg. I do not like it whatsoever. I think it's ugly, and I think it looks silly. So I've given him Cyclonus' 2.0 nightstick. This is also the gun for Superion, but there's an extra piece that comes in the box that you, enables you to put a clip on the end of there so that the big fist can hold it. I won't be giving this to Superion either. I don't like it. I'd rather keep it as Vector as an attack drone. Because they are 5 mil pegs, any 5 mil gun peg will fit them. Um, so as I said, I've been using Cyclonus's 2.0 nightstick. If I had a choice though, I'd love to get, I believe they're called the Master Shooter Target Masters, which are a bit more poseable. And consider the fact that they are, you know, third party representations and a bit more poseable of, of Generation 1 Target Master toys, I'd quite like to get my hands on some of them. Um, but Kapow is the main place I've looked and I can't really see them. And if I get them from outside the EU, Irish importation law costs me a fortune. When I got, I got, I bought Masterpiece Soundwave off um, eBay, and I got it from China, and I paid a hundred. No, I didn't even pay. I didn't even pay a hundred sterling for it, and I got whacked with a forty euro import charge. So I learnt my lesson. Sorry about that. Don't know what happened. Um, my camera randomly got shut off. I don't know why. But anyway, as I was saying, a third party has made a five gun kit which fits all five of the aerial bots, and then combines together to form a large gun for Superion, but a lot, all the reviews so far that I've seen says that it's cheap, nasty plastic, and don't bother with it. So, either give him a spare gun, or don't give him anything, or you can even technically use the jet pipes for weaponry if you really, really wanted to. But again, they suffer from the same problem of oversized penis envy. Um, overall, a very nice toy. Now, unfortunately, if you if you don't like one of these toys, you're stuffed because you're not going to be able to form Superior out of them. You're not going to be able to form the giant Uranus robot out of them. So you do have to buy all of them. And I do know from what I've been seeing online that this one tends to be the one that people dislike the most. And bear in mind, we've still got two to go. And then out, I believe it's June, so they're out next month, I believe. Anyway, we, um, obviously of course, with Uranus nearly done, while well, Superior nearly done and complete, we're moving on to the next range of third party toys. Uh, the next set of third party, which of course is going to be the new Feral Rex, the Predator King remake. First two parts of that are ordered. Guess what my next video series is going to be on? But they're a good while away and I cannot wait to get them. But for now, I just really want to complete the last two parts of this and have all five of these fantastic toys. I do recommend him. You don't really have a choice. If you're going for this set and you want to turn them into Superion, then you'll need to turn them into Superion. For the money that you're going to have to spend on them, he's more expensive than the others. Than the others. You know, I can never, if somebody want, you know, I never, I'd never presume to tell anyone how they should spend their money on their plastic crack addictions. But if you're going to shell out for the other four, you might as well shell out for the fifth. Even if to some people he is the weakest of the lot. And to be honest, of the three that I have so far, of him, Fireflight and Air Raid, I have to say he's probably the weakest. I don't dislike him, but I do think he's the weakest. Um, I, I also think probably aesthetically he's the ugliest. Um, I mean, I have seen an alternative colour scheme for him where all the white was black and that was gorgeous. Myself and Billy were looking at that when Billy was over on holiday there a couple of uh, well about a month and a half well, a month ago now it must be um, and that was and that was a really really nice and I think that was in black yellow and red um, and that was so much nicer than this white you know aesthetically he's he's nice but I can see where people are coming from in saying that you know Firefly and Air Raid are nicer but there we go um, 
So this one's a bit of a mixed bag. It's a bit of a mixed blessing in that some of it's good, some of it's bad, some of it's okay. I think he's good. I think he's. I think he's. I think he's better than good. I'm gonna need to start doing some kind of scale on these things. Oh well, too late to start now. Not when I'm five years down the line. Um, you know, I think he's good, and I think because he's going to be getting the. Um, um, I think because you know he is going to be getting the. He's going to be part of the fifth set, and I think when they're all together, they will look the nicest. But I do think aesthetically, he's probably the worst. I know, even though, and I know I shouldn't judge because I haven't got the other two, and I haven't really even seen any proper promo picks for them. But there we go. Um, there you go. So for those of you who thought that me doing third party still what was meant, I was going to do nothing but fangas in the entire time. No, here on my channel, I do at least try occasionally to be objective, except when it's really funny not to be. So for now, this is Silverbolt with Silverbolt. I do like saying that, even though I've only ever been able to say it, I think it's twice before. But Silverbolt with Silverbolt, Phantom, and Vector Star Wars pod racer thing. I'll stick to calling him Vector once I get him out of that silly gun mode. Uh, signing off, saying au revoir, adios, I'll be busy. Oh, one thing, I never mentioned price. Yeah, I know I did. I said he's a bit more expensive than everything is. Yeah. Bye-bye. I'll end it.